Hey there guys, it's me Iron Strix coming at you this time for a guide. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys a Bandos prayer flicking guide. Now I will say I don't do any, any tick eating, any trick eating. I did 1,386 kills on my Iron Men to get tacits, and the only way I would have got those kills in a reasonable amount of time is with prayer flicking. Now the guy that I learned from was from watching Cloud Banass. I watched his videos, some of you guys may have heard of him. So I'm gonna take what I learned on my Iron Man, so maybe you guys can use it either for your mains, or I'm mostly gonna try and gear this video towards Iron Man. It, you're not gonna get those ridiculously long like 40 kill trips, but this will help you get, you know, 10 kill trips. So without further ado, do, let's get into the guide. So as with all guides, the first thing we're going to start with is the requirements. So for the very basic requirements that I think are absolute must-haves, the very first one is you need a good understanding of Bandos. To be completely clear, this is a very advanced tactic. If you don't know what a tick is, then I would suggest maybe go watch some, some one tick perf looking guides, maybe some other guides to have a good understanding of what game ticks are. But if you understand what game ticks are, then this guide is for you. If not, well, you might want to do some other looking first and then come back here. Now, other than that, you're going to need a full set of Guthans. This requirement's probably a little steep for some Iron Men, but if you put your time in, you should have a full set of Guthans by the time you get to Bandos. This is vital for extending the length of your trip. You use your Guthans to heal up on the minions between kills. You also need a strong spec weapon. This really, really, really helps with your kill speed. I suggest a Drag Warhammer, a Sardom and Godsword if you have one. BGS maybe if you've already done some Bandos kills. Uh, personally, BGS is what I use. I don't have Drag Warhammer on my Iron Man. Prior to getting a BGS at Bandos, it took me about 600 kills to get one. I didn't use any spec weapon. Uh, I didn't bother with the Crystal Halberd. I felt it was too inaccurate, and I would rather have focused on my prayer flicking. But uh, if you feel like you, you can use a Crystal Halberd, feel free. I didn't find it to work very well at all. Now, this one's kind of aimed more at Iron Man mains aren't going to have this problem, but Super Combat Potions. I didn't have them when I started, didn't have them when I finished. Really wish I had them when I did. <laughs> because it saves some inventory space. And that inventory space is a difference between, you know, sometimes getting a five kill trip and getting a 10 kill trip. So this is kind of a, a soft requirement, not needed as much as the other ones, but highly recommended. Now, one that is a hard requirement is bones to peaches. You need to have it in some way. Mains, you guys can get bones to peaches tabs, Iron Man. Sorry, you're shit out of luck. You gotta unlock it yourself. Now, you can either make the tabs uh, if you want to bring Vengeance with you. Some people like to be on Lunars, use Vengeance. I know Alors, former rank 4, current rank 3 Iron Man. When he went to Bandos, he was using Vengeance. Personally, I don't like using Vengeance. I just stayed on the normal spellbook, chucked the uh, the Bones of Peaches runes in my pouch, and that was pretty much it. But you can, you can take Vengeance. I know a lot of people do, and it works out great. Now, as for the stat requirements, this really shouldn't be much of a surprise, but you absolutely 100% need piety to do this. As for the other requirements, it's a little bit more, a little bit more nebulous. You need probably about 85 plus in all stats, but I would definitely recommend into the 90s for your attack and strength. You just need enough accuracy and enough damage to kill Bandos in a timely manner defense a little less important but of course you are going to be taking hits from Bandos's uh, special attack and of course if you mess up any prayer flicks your defense level will help you that should be pretty much it for stats you should be able to easily meet those if you're considering prayer flicking at Bandos. Now, on to the one that's gonna be a little bit more difficult. This one's gonna change a lot, whether you're an Iron Man or you're a main, but to make things simple, there are a couple just absolute must-haves for gear. The very first absolute you must have this is a Serp Helm. You gotta have it. And the reasoning for this is not just because it's great stats, but also because the Venom effect is crucial for killing the minions in time. The thing is, is Bandos is on a timer from the very second that you kill it, and you only have so much time to kill the minions. So you want to be able to kill all the minions in time, and the Serp Helm lets you do that. So you gotta have a Serp Helm, it's just required. If you're on task, of course take your Slayer Helm, it's better. You're gonna struggle with the minions maybe a little bit for some of the kills, but you'll kill Bandos so much faster that it doesn't matter. Generally you're doing this off task. The other must have is you gotta have good god items. You're gonna want a Zami and a Bandos item. For going to Bandos. This just makes getting the kill count a lot easier. I would definitely recommend taking a Hosta as your Zami item. Not only is it really good for getting kill count, it's also great for killing the minions in the room so you don't waste your tentacle whip charges. The Hosta is plenty accurate. It's got good defensive stats so if you're getting towards the end of the trip you can also just pop it on and hopefully tank a couple of those range attacks from Bandos so it does give it a little bit of extra defense. But mostly it's a Zami item and that's what's really nice about it. As for a Bandos item you can of course take the Bandos Blessing. If you're an Iron Man and you don't have any Bandos 
Bando's Cure yet, which you probably won't. You could also maybe take some Bando's Dehyde or something like that. It, your first Bando's item is probably going to be the hardest one as an Iron Man, but I would recommend the Bando's Blessing if you can get it. If you're a man, you're probably going to be taking Bando's Tacits anyways, so you're good there. But I mean, uh, ba basically the must have is you got to have the right God item. So you need the Zami item and you need yourself a Bando's item. Now, as for the actual gear you're going to be wearing on your person while you get the kill, uh, let's go ahead and start with the weapon. You're going to be taking yourself a Kraken Whip or Tentacle Whip or whatever you want to call the thing, you're going to take the Tentacle Whip. Now, as for your offhand item, I like to take a DFS personally. The people who do like the really long solo trips, they take an Ellie. So clearly they value the tank over the uh, the accuracy stats of say a Dragon Defender as well. But Dragon Defender is great because I mean, you're going to be really accurate. The kills are going to be fast. If you're taking Vengeance, I would probably recommend taking yourself a Defender because you're going to take more hits from Bandos' special attack, which means you're going to trigger Vengeance more often. Now, as for the actual armor you're going to wear, we already kind of covered the, the Serp Helm. You're going to need that in your helmet slot, must have. Now, as for the chest and leg slot, best in slot for legs, obviously Tacits, take those if you got them. Uh, for chest slot, some people don't like to take the BCP. Some people just like to wear their Guthans plate body, and that's the chest plate that they wear. Saves them an inventory slot, that's another prayer potion they could take, maybe another shark, maybe another super combat, whatever you want to do. Me, I like wearing it, mostly because swag, but also because uh, it gives you a little bit extra range defense. You don't take quite as much damage from Banos' special attack, because Banos is really, really nice range defense. As for boots, obviously, Primordials, if you got them, D-Boots are fine too, not actually a big difference. Barrow's Gloves, gotta have it. I like to take Zerker Ring. Up to you, whether you use Zerker Ring, Suffering. Um, you can use a Warrior Ring as well. You know, there's a lot of debate, Zerker versus Warrior Ring. I've always fallen on the Zerker Ring side of the debate. I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life, but uh, Zerker Ring, that's all I'm saying. Fire Cape, of course. If you don't have one, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Get a Fury. If you got a Torture, Torture's obviously better. Fury at minimum, Torture at best. And uh, yeah, as for the inventory items, like I said earlier in the guide, full set of Guthans. I mean, you can wear, you can not even wear any bandos. Like say you're an Iron Man, it's okay if you don't have any bandos armor. You can just wear your Guthans plate body, and your Guthans chain skirt. That's what I did when I was starting out and I didn't have a BCP or tacits or anything like that. Just be aware you're going to have to wear an item like, you know, a Bandos Coif or something like that. Now, as for filling out the rest of the inventory, I like to take two brews and restore as well as a super combat. The brews are mostly there for insurance. In between kills, say maybe your Guthans fails you, doesn't give you very many heals. You can just brew up at the end of the kill, chug a restore, and you're great. Take a few prayer potions. I like to take five just because, like I said, you're not you're not ticketing. You're not going to be there forever. This is enough to get some kills. Maybe you'll get some restore drops while you're there. But for the most part, this is going to be able to secure you four, five, six, seven kills. Just fine. It's not going to be an issue. I take plenty of sharks, mostly because, once again, not tick eating. So you got to survive those kills somehow. You're probably going to use about two sharks per kill, maybe three or four if the kill is going badly. Also, to fill out the rest of it, you just need two Trollheim tabs. One is to teleport to Trollheim. The other is to take a house tab back to your house to get out. It saved my ass so many times when the servers are having issues. And, you know, the, the very last slot there. Take your rune pouch, check your runes in it, you know, you're going to take up another inventory space if you're using bone speeches tabs, but up to you. You're probably going to die at Bando, so have some ecumenical keys in your bank. The servers are known to have issues, we've known this for a long time. You will die while prayer flicking, it's inevitable, you'll make a mistake, you'll get punched for 60 damage and you'll just die. Trust me when I say it's worth it. That's pretty much it. Those are all the basic tools you're going to need, so let's go ahead and get over to Bando. So I'm going to assume you know how to get KC at Bando, so I'm not going to show you that, but I am going to show you how to set everything up, where to stand, and how to prayer flick, of course. A couple small tips I think are worth mentioning on my way over. Uh, while you're getting kill count, don't wear your Serp Helm. Put on your Guthans. It helps out. Obviously, pray mage when you get in here because you're gonna you're gonna take hits from the star wizards and stuff. And uh, yeah, you're hearing my game sounds right now. I'm kind of having to talk over them a little bit, but the reason you want your game sounds on is because the audio trigger will help you at Bandos. Um, the minions make very specific noises, and learning those noises will help you become better at prayer flicking. Those audio cues do help a lot. So you know, consider turning on your game sounds just for Bandos. Another small tip I have here while getting kill count. If you somehow manage to uh, to get a hammer over on this side, it happens. Don't worry about it. Uh, the hammers are really, really, really common next to the, the door. The goblins over there drop hammers quite commonly. Uh, so don't worry too much about picking up a hammer over here. Because, you know, you'd have to, like, juggle sharks and crap like that. If you have a dragon war hammer, this obviously isn't an issue. But if you're like me and you're a pleb, you don't have one. You know, because you haven't really tried to get one yet. 
Uh, yeah, just don't worry about it. Also, another little tip I, I would recommend, you can go into your window settings and you can change your, your mouse to uh, a black mouse like this one. It's black with a white outline. I find this helps a lot at God Wars Dungeon, particularly because, you know, this, this white background. After I'd been at Bandos for a long time, prayer flicking, I would, you know, I would lose track of my mouse. I would actually struggle to see where it is. Maybe, you know, this is just me. Maybe I need glasses or something, but... I did find that this helped make me a little bit more accurate because I could I could more quickly discern where I, I was. Also, some people prefer playing on fixed uh, for prayer flicking. I know some people that normally play on resizable just play on fixed mode for all this prayer flicking shenanigans. But you know, I I just prefer playing on resizable. That's just me. So those are some uh, some small little thoughts. And the number one reason to play with your game sounds on at Bandos. Yeah, right there. <laughs> That's the number one reason. Now, we got really lucky. I didn't have to world hop at all to find an empty world. There's a few things you gotta do before you enter the room. Of course, you're gonna pot up. Uh, but make sure you equip your Serp Helm and your Tentacle before you walk in. Make sure your Quick Prayers, uh, you have them set up. You're gonna wanna have Melee and Piety. Uh, now, when you enter the room, the minions obviously aren't gonna be in the right spot to be, to be ticked. And when I, when I talk about Ticked, we're talking about we want the range minion to attack us first, the mage minion to attack us next, and then the melee minion and Bandos have three ticks to attack us in. Now, why do I say that? It's because each one of these minions attacks at five ticks. Bandos attacks every six ticks. That means for every cycle of the minions, the minions all stay on the same cycle, they're fixed, Bandos moves forward one tick in the cycle. That means we have kind of like this three tick window uh, where Bandos can punch us in the face and we can still flick the other minions. No problem. Now, the problem becomes when Bandos gets out of that, he lines up with one of these two minions. If we have it go range, mage, and then three ticks for melee plus bandos, it would be, you know, our prayers would be range, mage, melee, 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 range, mage, melee, 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 range, mage, melee, melee, melee. And now the problem would be on this next cycle, bandos would hit me at the same time I put on protect from missiles. That's the issue. And that's why you see people run away or walk under bandos. You may have seen somebody Perth looking at Bandos before, if you didn't know why, that is why, because Bandos will line up with the same attack timing. So when we walk in the room, we want we want vaguely, what we want is we want the mage minion to be farther away than the range minion. So actually, like when you enter the room, does matter. It's it's kind of it kind of is a big deal. Because if you can line it up so that you have the range minion attacking you before the mage minion, then you can kind of line it up so you already have things flicked. Now, if you don't walk into the room at quite the right time um, you can always you can always fix it by walking underneath the minions this uh, you know the tick before they would attack you this delays their attack one tick and that's something you're gonna be doing quite often uh, just to fix things when Bandos spawns the spot where you need to spawn when Bandos uh, when you're waiting for Bandos to spawn after you've killed everything you need to wait right here, this spot right here. You can kind of notice it because you've got these weird funky tiles with the with the textures and then you've got like this clean white texture uh, where these two corners, like see th these corners of these two tiles meet up. This tile right here, that's where you need to stand. That's where the mage minion generally spawns. He can sometimes spawn on the tile back from it on the wall. He can sometimes spawn here. Uh, he can sometimes spawn there, spawn a little bit forward. It kind of spawns in this general area, but that tile right there is where you want to stand. So we're going to stand there after that kill, but obviously you have to walk in the room first. So, uh, yeah, let's do that. You can see immediately as I walk into the room that the minions are on the wrong tick. We've got the mage minion and the range minion attacking at the same time, so I have to fix it. The way that you do this is walking under the mage minion two ticks before it attacks you because it takes you one tick to walk under the mage minion and obviously it takes one tick for it to walk out from underneath you. This will delay it from attacking you on the tick that it would normally be attacking you. So after fixing the ticks, you can see I kind of figure out where I'm at in terms of the cycle. Let me go ahead and bring that diagram up for you there. This is the cycle that we're on and that's why I have to run away on this tick. 
The way I always keep myself on track at Bandos, the thing that I'm watching when I'm prayer flicking, of course I'm listening to the sounds, but I'm also watching the range minion. For some reason, I just base all my flicking off of what the range minion is doing. So as you can see, I'm making a lot of mistakes. Very easy to do, especially since I haven't been to Bandos in two months, but the next trip will be a little bit better, hopefully. One thing you'll see me doing here uh, is when I walk underneath Bandos. I'm actually making a mistake, and this is pretty easy to do if you're not used to being at Bandos. When you attack Bandos from walking under him or running away, you should actually flick range prayer, flick mage prayer, click Bandos to attack him, and then flick back on your melee prayer. Uh, it's really scary because if you don't get the timing window right, you're going to get punched in the face for a bunch of damage by Bandos. But when you do get that timing, it is ever so awesome. Basically what happens if you don't do that is you miss an entire another attack cycle. Instead of catching Bandos on that very first cycle, you catch him on the second one. Therefore, you only get a few attack rounds in with Bandos before you have to run away again. So basically you're missing out on an entire attack cycle. It really, really, really does affect your DPS and your troops will be shorter if you keep making that mistake. Now here you'll see me put on my Guthins. You wanna quickly do this. You should be able to do it in one, maybe two game ticks. Kinda in that window where you've got the protect from melee prayer on, just find a good spot, swap on the Guthins and keep prayer flicking. You're gonna get really fast at playing the game from going to Bandos and prayer flicking, trust me. Now after everything is dead, you of course wanna go around collect all the bones, turn them into peaches, heal yourself up, use your brews if you need to, if your HP is still low after eating the peaches, just chug some brews and restores. Remember to use the altar and you know, just keep practicing your prayer flicks. You'll get better at it. I remember it took me probably about two or 300 kills to really get the hang of prayer flicking and really be able to just walk into the bandos room after two months and still remember how to do it. Now you'll see me run to that spot we talked about earlier between these uh, two textures here. Let me just circle it there. Um, I sit here and I put on my spec weapon and I wait for Bandos to spawn. You'll see me wait with the range prayer because if everything goes correctly, the mage minion spawns underneath you and you can just immediately go range mage, melee, run up and hit Bandos and then everything's ticked perfectly. Unfortunately, that didn't happen this time. You saw the mage minion spawn next to me. That means I have to waste a little bit of time here trying to tick the mage minion. It's really finicky. Sometimes you think you're clicking underneath the mage minion. You're actually just going to walk right next to it uh you'll just kind of get a hang of it it's kind of more of a an art than a science really One thing you do want to be aware of, and I make that mistake here, if you run away too early or walk under Bandos too early, it's going to completely screw up the cycles. Because basically every time you run under or walk away from Bandos, it skips to the next cycle because you're delaying when Bandos hits you. So instead of going down that order, which is what you want it to do, and you want to just walk under it to avoid the last two cycles, you want to just keep it on those three that are safe. What you can accidentally do is you can accidentally cut yourself off the third cycle or maybe accidentally step out into the last cycle and you know get punched or something like that basically you have to be careful when you run away and when you walk under bandos As you can see, this kill is going a lot better than my very first kill. My flicks are on point. I'm walking away at the right times. I'm clicking on Bandos before I turn on my melee prayer. You know, this is this is actually a, a couple trips in and I was kind of more warmed up at this point. This is exactly what you want your Bandos trips to look like. Now here you're going to see something that I haven't really talked about yet, which is Bandus's ranged special attack can hit a maximum of 35 HP. If you're confident in your prayer flicks, you'll often sit right above that. You'll often sit at around 40 to 50 HP. And when you dip under, you'll eat up. Now, if you're going to be tick eating, you don't worry about this. What you do is when you get low and, you know, under 35 hit points and Bandos special attacks you, you eat on the same tick that you would take the damage. But that's really risky to learn as a beginner. You should probably wait until you've got a bunch of kills to try that it's quite difficult it's it's a whole nother ball game but yeah once it once you dip below 35 hp you need to you need to eat and continue prayer flicking that's really the toughest part about this is continuing to do the things you need to do like special attack bandos or use your prayer potions or eat your food while continuing to prayer flick so you don't take damage and continuing to run away from bandos on the proper ticks i mean one thing you can always do when you're panicking is you can always walk under bandos and uh you know stop prayer flicking and, and eat up a little bit that'll save your 
trip. Of course, once you're good at it, you won't want to do that anymore. You'll want to just keep prayer flicking and uh, eat your food one at a time. Stay calm. You know, the, the more you practice this, the better you're going to get at it. My best trips were personally, you know, around eight or nine kills, but I'm not the best in the world at this. I'm just capable of doing it. There are players much better than me. They can use these similar techniques to get, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 kills. I think the current record is like 81 or something. Of course, that involves tick eating, which I don't cover in this guide, but this should get you started for prayer flicking at Bandos. If you guys enjoyed the guide, go ahead and uh, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, you know, let me let me know what you liked about it. I put a lot of work into it, so I really hope it helps you out. You know, if, you, if you're going to go ahead and try the techniques in this guide, let me know in the comments down below, you know, how many kills you get, what your best trip was. Like I said, mine mine's only about eight or nine kills. I don't even remember. I did it like three months ago. So yeah, once again, just let me know in the comment section what do you guys think. Give me your feedback and uh, yeah, hopefully see you around for another guide sometime soon. I'm thinking about actually doing a Zolder guide for Iron Man. So let me know if you'd like to see that. Anyways, Strix out. See you guys next time.